Hello and welcome to Noctua Day. This is the July episode of my Moth Trap Monthly series. In total, I have 17 species to show, so let's get started. Starting off with this rather smart looking moth, this is a buff ermine. They are named after their buff coloration, although an extremely rare form with almost entirely black wings is known to exist. A common moth, they fly in a single generation from May to July and are found in most habitats. A very distinctive moth, and one I've already shown on this series, this is a buff tip. They're perhaps one of the best camouflage species we have in the UK, looking almost exactly like a broken twig when at rest on a tree. They fly from May to July and are common, being found in habitats such as woodlands, hedgerows and gardens, where their camouflage excels. Now let's quickly take a look at a micromoth for a change. This is a Chrysotuchia cormella, also known as the garden grass veneer. They're a common species, flying in a single generation from May to September, although their flight season can go into October in the south. They're mainly found in grasslands. This is a common footman. Out of all the footman species, this is the most, well, common of the species. Like I said before, they're a common species, being found in most of the UK, although they are less common in Scotland. They fly in from July to August and can be found in lowland habitats such as gardens, farmland and woodlands. A very nice looking species with a fitting name, this is a coronet, although the name itself is in reference to the white markings on the forewings which are said to resemble a coronet in some individuals. A local species, found mainly in the southern half of the UK, they fly in a single generation from May to August and are found in habitats such as woodlands, downlands and marshlands. With a distinctive way of resting its wings, the early fawn is one of the earliest flying of the UK fawn species. They fly in two generations, the first being from March to May and the second from July to September. They're a common species and are found in almost all of the UK and fly in habitats like woodlands, scrubs and gardens. With edges of wings that look like they've been scorched by fire, the flame is a suitable name for this moth. Common and well distributed throughout the UK, they fly in a single generation from June to July and are found in a wide range of habitats such as gardens, farmlands, heathlands and woodland edges. This is a middle barred miner. Like its name suggests, the species is named after the bar that runs horizontally along the middle of the forewing when at rest. It's one of the many minor species of moths found in the UK, which are quite small macromoths, often confused to be species of micromoths. Like the flame moth, this is a common species, also flying in June to July, although in the north the flight period may extend into August. There are moths of damp grasslands, marshes and can also be found in gardens. Now let's take a look at a grey moth. This is a poplar grey. They're a common species, although more common in the south, and they fly from May to August in habitats such as woodlands, gardens and parks. Another grey species of moth, although unfortunately with this individual I cannot give an exact species identification. This is either a grey dagger or a dark dagger. The reason as to why is because the two are almost identical in appearance the only way to tell the two apart is to dissect them, and, well, I'd rather not kill a moth, to be honest. So, both species are common, although the dark dagger is less common than the grey. Both fly from May to August, and both can have a second generation from September to October. They're also both found in a wide range of habitats, like woodlands, gardens, fens and grasslands. So, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you can tell the two apart by their flight season or their habitats. One of my favourite species I've had this month, 
This is a marbled green. They're named for their green, marble-like markings, which make them quite a distinctive moth. A local species, they're mainly found in the south of the UK and fly in a single generation from July to August and are found in coastal habitats, although they can occasionally be found inland as well. Like the grey or dark dagger I talked about earlier, this individual could be one of multiple species, the only way to tell them apart being dissection. This is one of the rustic species. It's one of either three species, those being the common rustic, the lesser common rustic and the rems rustic. All of these species are common, they all fly from July to August and all can be found in grassland habitats such as gardens, with the common rustic also being able to be found in woodlands. So like the grey and dark dagger, telling these species apart is impossible without dissection. This is an uncertain. They're named because, well, you could easily be uncertain as to what species it is exactly. They look similar to other species of Noctuidae, such as Vines Rustic. I don't have a photo of that species to show, although it's more than likely I've overlooked one as an uncertain at some point. Being found commonly in most of the UK, and locally in the southern half of Scotland, this species flies from June to August. In the south, there is occasionally a second generation from September to October. They inhabit a wide range of habitats, although they're mainly found in low-lying places such as woodlands and gardens. Having a similar shape and appearance to the large yellow underwing, this is a lesser yellow underwing. Named for their yellow underwings and their smaller size when compared to the large yellow underwing, a way to tell the two apart is that the large has black spots on the lower edges of the forewings, whereas the lesser doesn't. Although, size should be a sure way to tell the two apart. Large yellow underwings have a wingspan of 45 to 52 mm, whereas the lesser yellow underwings have a wingspan of just 37 to 45 mm. Like the large, the lesser is a common species, flying in one generation from June to September. They fly throughout most of the UK, being ubiquitous, found in many habitats. This is a spectacle moth. They're named after the scales on the thorax, which looks like spectacles when viewed head on. This is one of my favourite moths I've seen in July because of this reason. A common species, it flies in a single generation in the north, from May to August, and in the south, it can fly in two, from April to September. They fly in habitats such as gardens, hedgerows, fens and woodlands. Out of all of the highlights of this month, this is definitely my favourite. This is a garden tiger, my first in almost three years. They're named after the markings on their wings, which bear some resemblance to tiger stripes. Now, this species is considered common, despite the fact that it has been declining significantly in most areas, especially in inland southern Britain. In six years of moth trapping, I've only encountered two individual garden tigers, this being one of them. At the moment, the exact reason for this decline is uncertain, but it's likely linked to human activity. Flying in one generation, from July to August, they fly in habitats like gardens, fens, sand dunes and open woodland. The final moth species I'll be showing in this video, this is both a new for year and a new for garden for me. This is a southern wainscot. A local species, they are widespread in the south although are less so further north you go. They fly in a single generation from June to August and are found in habitats such as marshes and fens. So, these were all the species I found during the month of July. Overall, I'm happy with the amount and also the variety, as well as finally having seen a garden tiger after years of not seeing one. If you enjoyed this video, a like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.